Does your song have noisy recordings? Like maybe a noisy electric guitar? Or maybe a noisy vocal recording? She well, although those aren't ideal for music production, there are some ways you can fix them to make them sound way better. In today's video, I'll show you three ways you can reduce the noise from your track so you can get them as clean as possible. Now, before diving into these methods, I do want to say and emphasize that recording clean sounds in the first place is the most important part of getting a noise-free sound. If you do have especially noisy sounds, the best thing to do to fix the problem is often to re-record them. Now, I know that's not always possible, which is why I'm making this video, but it is an important caveat to know. Let's hop into method one, which involves using a noise gate. Every DAW already comes with a noise gate, so this is a free solution for you. A noise gate works like a door. Anytime the audio volume passes a certain threshold, the door opens and the signal can be heard. Anytime it drops below the threshold, the door closes and you can't hear anything. Let's put it on this noisy guitar track I showed you from before and see it in action. You can hear that the amp has a lot of ambient noise sound that's going on because this is such a high gain guitar track as we play it. Even when the guitar isn't playing, you hear that amp buzz. To get rid of that, a great thing to do is use a noise gate. Most of the time for noise gates, we'll want to put them before any other plugins. In this case, we'll put it before the amp. We'll go into dynamics, we'll go into noise gate, and we'll put it on the track. You can already hear that the default settings have made it closed only when it's not playing. Let's hear if it plays. Perfect, and we're done. <laughs> no, there is some more to it. There's some, probably some things that you should know with this noise gate. The threshold is probably the biggest thing to adjust with a noise gate. If we go to a negative 100 decibels, it will probably let everything through and it won't gate anything. But as we adjust the threshold up, it's saying that it needs to at least hit negative 68 decibels for it to play or... So you can still hear some of that buzz happening right in between here. So we want to push this up even higher. It was pretty good from the first get go at negative 50. Let's try it at negative 46. The attack and the hold and the release work just the same as a compressor. As soon as it crosses that threshold, the attack is how soon that noise gate will open up. The hold is how long the noise gate will stay open no matter what. If there's a little blip like this, it will automatically stay open for at least 40 milliseconds. And the release is 10 milliseconds, meaning after it crosses through that threshold, waits 40 milliseconds, it will then turn off and close. You can adjust this as you need to for the rest of your sound. But notice how much cleaner this sounds at the beginning. There's no amp noise at all. Hear that guitar sound when it needs to happen. This won't eliminate the noise from your recording, but it will only allow this noise to play through when the other more important sonic information is playing, in this case, the guitar. A lot of times with guitars, even while they're playing, you really can't hear that bottom end amp noise anyways. This can be a really quick fix for noise problems. I use this a lot, especially on guitars, but it won't get rid of that noise while the instrument is playing. And also if your noise is really, really loud in the background, sometimes finding the right threshold for a gate can be really tricky. That leads me into strategy number two for eliminating noise, which is using EQ. Noise itself comes in a lot of different flavors and sonic signatures. Some are very bassy, while some are very high pitched. If your noise has a specific sound to it, you can sometimes carve it out with EQ. For example, if you recorded vocals and there's a hum of an air conditioner on the recording, you can go in with an EQ and give it a good old fashioned high pass filter. A lot of noise happens down there in the low end frequencies that you might not even really realize are there. Let me pull up my vocal and show you what I mean. She said I'd rather be abandoned. This vocal sounds pretty good on its own, but as soon as we start to compress it and add processing, we're gonna notice that there's kind of a low hum going on in the background. Can't really hear she it now. Said, but if we put on this compressor, we're gonna bring up that noise floor and check it out. She said I'd rather so you can be kind of hear that humming. This, this could be an air conditioner. It could be something else going on in your room, a, a fan, but we just don't really need that. And an easy way to get rid of that in this case would be an EQ. So we'll go in with an EQ and we'll add a high pass filter, getting rid of that ultra low end. And that's really going to help us out before we compress it. So I'll put it before the compressor so that we don't bring up those ambient sounds kind of in the background. She said, we'll take this up all the way until we start cutting into the beef of our vocal. She said, I'd rather be abandoned than be with check it out with before and after. It didn't completely eliminate it, but it definitely helped out. She said I'd rather Without. be abandoned than be with. with. 
a lot more present and a lot more controlled of a sound, especially without that low end noise there. And actually cutting out this ultra low end on most instruments will help eliminate your noise, but it will also help your mix fit better together. If you cut out these frequencies of all of your sounds, except for your really, really low end sounds like your bass and your kick, it will let those particular instruments be heard way more clearly. I do this all the time on recordings. Even if I don't hear that noise, I like to just get rid of it and know that it's gone by using a high pass filter. Another way I'll use the EQ to help eliminate noise is a bit more of an advanced technique called EQ notching. Occasionally while you record, you'll record resonant frequencies that sound unpleasant. Resonant frequencies happen when sound is bouncing around your room and finds kind of a, a sweet spot. A lot of them come together and form kind of sharp peaks in the higher harmonics of your voice or whatever instrument you happen to be recording. They look like this on an EQ chart. Yeah. I'd rather be abandoned. This particular voice doesn't have fre resonant frequencies. This is just a demonstration of what they sound like. Resonant frequencies happen a lot in home studio setups, especially those with echoey rooms without acoustic treatment. To help with these frequencies, you can use an EQ to help tame them. To find these resonant frequencies, you, you can demo them by using a Q with a really high notch and a really high Q and just sweeping it across the vocal frequency or whatever instrument and listening for some inconsistencies that don't sound pleasant. That doesn't sound particularly good on its own. Granted, I am boosting it by plus 16 decimals, but if this was a worse resonant frequency, it would sound even nastier. What we can do now is after we find it, we can just take this decibels and we can just turn it the other way and get rid of it like that. Rather be a you probably won't notice a big difference in the actual vocal quality, but do this a few more times on any resonant frequencies and you got yourself a vocal that's probably gonna sit in the mix a little bit better. There are plugins specifically designed to get rid of resonances like this, like Soothe 2. You can do this with stock EQ like I just showed you and it will work okay, but I actually prefer to use a dynamic EQ to make this a little bit more natural sounding. For this, I'll use a Fab Filter Pro Q3. I'll do the same thing as before. I'll load the Pro Q3 up. I'll make a notch really far up here and I'll just try to find those for like resonant frequencies. I can't even handle so around 3100 hertz is where we're going to be sitting the same place we found it with the last EQ and this time we're going to take our gain and instead of plus 30 we're going to go to only about minus five or so and then we're going to take this knob here and we're going to extend it down. That means anytime that this frequency goes above there, it's going to dynamically take it down. It's not going to be as harsh as the actual cut is from the EQ. You can see that moving in time. So only on the parts where the resonant frequency is particularly loud or harsh is it going to turn it down. This is going to result in a much more natural sounding sound. I will give one warning though about resonant frequencies and notching EQ to reduce any sort of noise or bad recording sound. Using too many notches will easily zap the life away from your vocal recordings, and that is absolutely not what you want. Use this sparingly and only use it if you hear those kind of resonant frequencies that are happening. In an acoustically treated room, you won't have that problem so much, but with a lot of echoes going on into the microphone, they can come together, boost themselves up in the high frequencies, and result in some noise that you don't want. And that leads me into the last method I'll use for removing noise. It is a paid method, but it's one of the best ways to do it in the industry. The plugin I'll use is called Isotopes RX. This plugin actually has a bunch of specific things it can do to remedy poorly recorded audio, but we'll be using it today to denoise some recordings. Let's go back to the guitar track we were working on and see what we can denoise with it. I heard that noise gate blipping in and out, so I'm gonna drop that threshold down. I'm gonna go into my RX suite, and this time I'm going to be looking for guitar denoise. Exactly what we're looking for. Put it on my track, and we'll see what it sounds like. For this to work, we're going to have to learn the amp profile by just playing the noise that's happening here in the amp. Once we get a, we'll go here. Well, now we have the amp noise learned. Let's see if we can get rid of it. It's not as powerful as the noise gate, which will completely eliminate the noise, but this is getting slightly rid of that low end noise that was happening with the actual guitar when it was playing. A helpful tool. The next thing we're going to do is denoise our voice, which has a crazy amount of noise. I added some noise post-processing just so you can get an idea of what this thing can do. Listen to all that noise in the background. 
This would be a very worst case scenario dealing with a vocal, but for this purpose, I'm gonna work with it. Let's go back into Isotope's RX suite. You can see all of the possible options we have here. And we're going to go into vo voice denoise right here. Let's play it and let's see what happens. She said I'd rather be abandoned than be with you second. I can't even handle it. All right. You can already hear it working and it's doing an okay job. There's a lot of noise for it to combat with, but it's sounding a lot better. Like I said before, the best thing to do is re-record these tracks if they're not as clean as you want them to be. There's only so much you can do post-processing to get them to sound clean, but a proper recording from the beginning is gonna give you the best result. Check it out before and after. After, be before. It's gonna be a lot easier to work with that vocal without all that noise in the background. And there you go, three methods you can use right now to fix the noise on your tracks. If you learned something throughout this video, subscribe. We make videos like this all the time. I'm gonna say this again, but the best thing you can do is fix it in the recording stage. And if you wanna learn more about how to record vocals properly, I actually made a full video on my process that you can watch right up here.